Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So how can we know our sins? Uh, how can we know our sins when we are not aware of our sins uh, a lot of times? And so a lot of times we think, okay, I need to do istighfar or I need to do tawbah, but we're not sure exactly what they are and how much am I in the pickle, how much of, in trouble am I in. So there are two types of people. Uh, those that are not aware of their sins and those people that are aware of their sins. Uh, people that are aware of their sins or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes your sins to you uh, is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon you and He's exposing His sins to you so you can repent to Him. And if you're not aware of your sins then this becomes a problem. But there are two ways that you can know um, that if your sins are being hidden from you because of your sins. So in other words, your sins are not being exposed to you because uh, it is uh, a type of uh, uh, a blinding. You're being blinded from being able to see your own sins. And therefore, you're not able to repent as vigorously and strongly as you should. So one way is that if you don't feel lazza, you don't feel um, you don't feel joy in ibadah, if you don't feel joy in salah, if you don't feel joy in your ibadah, if you don't jo feel joy in your du'as and contentment in your du'as, and if you don't feel the raghba, uh to want to be engaging with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a private and a personal level, if you don't feel that, then, and at the same time you don't feel like you have a lot of sins, then there is a chance that your sins are stopping you from seeing your own sins. An example of that from the time of the Prophet sallallahu was people that were most lazy in showing up and praying Salatul Asr and Salatul Isha and uh, particularly, uh, sorry, not Asr but Fajr and Isha uh, prayers. Uh, so, so sometimes people don't see their sins and this is also one of the signs of a munafiq. A munafiq doesn't feel like he's a munafiq whereas a, a true mu'min feels that I'm a munafiq sometimes as was the case of uh, of uh, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, and also the famous hadith of Hanzala radiallahu anh. <clears throat> at the same time so there are, so the one thing is is that you feel lazza enjoyment delight in your ibadah so you know if you do then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then the chances are that your sins are not veiled from you that and if you don't feel that, chances are that your sins are veiled from you. And that your uh, nafs, when it even speaks out against you, why are you doing this, is not strong enough. Versus if you are in that state where you enjoy ibadah, even a slight disobedience to Allah and a slight uh, uh, wavering of your nafs, will be, it'll, your nafs will become more sensitive to your inward mor uh, morality. And at the same time, the second way is related to this, which is that if you're not, if there is a, you have a certain amount of knowledge and you're not able to act upon that knowledge, the distance between your knowledge, your amount of knowledge and your ability to act upon it, one of the barriers is uh, the diseases of the hearts. And so that means that your inability to act upon your knowledge is because, uh, is because the, uh, the sins are keeping you from acting upon the deen. And uh, then there are other ways that one can know his or her sins in which Allah will expose to you by either exposing your sins or enlightening your heart uh, that you overcome those sins and, be, and become sensitive to those sins and then overcome them. So for example, somebody who smokes uh, but doesn't feel anything about it. Later on, when he starts ibadah, he turns towards Allah. He starts disliking that particular act, and first he wants to get rid of it. And then it becomes easier for him to get rid of it. 
Um, we have seen this in the U.S. at the mass level uh, with hundreds and thousands of people who converted to Islam, who became Muslim, and they had sincere intentions, and they left all that life behind them of drugs and alcohol and so on and so forth. Okay, then there are other ways, for example, one can uh, give bay'ah, uh, and choose a murshid, uh, baytul irshad, he can do bay'ah for, bay'ah can be done for many reasons, it can be done for for an amir, it can be done for, you know, uh, for Baytul Ishad, for purification of the soul, it can be done for uh, leadership, it can be done for the Khilafah, it can be done for for Jihad, it can be done for many purposes. Bayar is basically a promise, but in an organized way where you are within an Islamic structure. And so Baytul Ishad is one of the ways that's traditionally been there, and uh, it has uh, derived, m it has produced many great personalities, and it has people have derived at the individual level a lot of benefit from being on a strict program of a like a curriculum of purifying the heart um, using different methods the other is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah wants good for you he puts people around you either enemies or friends so either enemies Allah will put enemies around you who are going to criticize you and their criticism if you are a humble person you will even consider their criticism and rectify yourself so maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces two jealous people who have a magnifying glass over you and they're always looking at you and always observing you and observing things about you that you don't observe about yourself but those jealous people point out things about you that uh, help you keep straight and uh, in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might appoint good friends for you. Uh, uh, so, Al-Mar'u Ma'aman Ahabba on Yawm al Qiyamah. So, a person is with whom he loves. So, your friends are a blessing if they are good because they will point out to you Al Mu'minu Mira' al Mu'min. A Mu'min is there like a mirror to another believer where he's able to help you see your faults and he can see his faults through you and you help each other so this is another way that you can know your sins and this is why tawassul bil haqi wa tawassul bil sabr was at the internal level one is you know tawassul bil haqi in terms of da'wah but in the internal level was mentioned in the very beginning because they had that attitude the companions that when they were told this is wrong they were they were very willing to accept that nowadays people are willing to fight over why did you criticize me and so on and so forth so just one example about, about that is when the that uh, African lady who was a Sahabiya uh, who came to Umar bin Khattab and told him after his khutbah that you're wrong to try to put any uh, level every any any uh, curtail the amount of mahr. Uh, she told Umar bin Khattab that and Umar bin Khattab went up back in the khutbah and thanked her and said that you know I thank my sister who's brought this to my attention and she is right and I'm wrong. And so, even though they were very strong in their opinion, but they were even more strong upon what is right. And so when they heard something that made sense to them, they were willing to. And this was the attitude of the Sahaba in general. They were, they, the Prophet created a community that was always ready for tarbiyah, always ready for islah. And uh, so this was their internal attitude. And this is one of the reasons you find the Qur'an to be very frank in its, in its tone. If you ever want to study the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to st study the Hadith al-Qudsi mostly. Over there you find the, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for humanity and for the mu'mineen. But Qur'an is very frank in its general mode of conversation. In the same way, uh, you can be, you can find your sins or uh, get ibrah, you know, over doing something wrong. Ibrah, like Luqman alayhi salatu wasalam, he said that, you know, other people learned their mistakes by doing them. I learned the mistakes. I learned mistakes and sins by, by seeing other people, by Ibrah. So Ibrah, uh, like what happened to Fir'aun, what Allah does to people. What happens to people who get involved in interest and then look at their lives afterwards. Uh, always people who are involved in interest, for example, their life has one problem or another problem. And that is not to say that others don't, but Particularly, this has been noticed about interest. Um, and in the same way, um, 
you can do muhasba of your nafs uh, and there is uh, many methods different ways of doing that how you can sit down with yourself and talk to yourself as the Quran says in al insana ala nafsihi basira man has full insight to himself so if you really get in touch with your inner self your outer self your outer self is throwing excuses but if you cross those excuses to your inner self your inner self will tell you the reality of you who you really are so whether you give bayar to somebody to purify yourself or whether uh, you uh, um, your enemies or whether your friends or whether you do uh, muhasba uh, or you get lessons from other you get ibrah from the life of other people and uh, you know these are some of the ways in which you can know your sins but the two main categories are those that you have raghba towards ibadah you have an inclination and delight in doing ibadah you're not running away from doing more ibadah and uh, or uh, and uh, this is the way to uh, so this is very important ibadah specifically not knowledge because knowledge is an egotistic thing so um, and it is easy for you to follow the Sharia versus it's hard for you to follow the Sharia. So this is one category. Then how, when Allah, if Allah does the favor to you to expose your sins to you, not to others, but if Allah exposes your sins to you, then uh, whether that is through, you know, people that are criticizing you or through a sheikh who might guide you or whether that is through doing muhasba or whether, whether that is through when you're doing muhasba, you're comparing yourself, for example, to the ayat of Quran, what, how the Quran describes the believers. You know, they pray, they keep their promises, so on and so forth. So you're, you're able to make that comparison. And this is a longer subject, but, uh, you know, are you able to get ibrah from other people, learn about sins from other people, and then see that in yourself? Or stay away from it so that you don't do it for, uh, to yourself, what others have done to themselves, like take drugs and alcohol and then ruin their lives? Um, do you have friends that are going to help you keep on the straight path like Allah says Kunu sadiqin, be with the righteous people so it is important to become aware of your sins and at every level and no matter at what level you are there are still improvements to be made and more improvements to be made and more improvements to be made and uh, so this is very إِهْدِنَ السَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ never ends Allah never ends. Allah is the friend of the believers. He takes them out of darknesses into light. More, there's always more. You're always in darkness compared to the next light. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people who are not blind, who are able to see and feel uh, when we are sinning and um, when we are not on the right track. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our ibadah a delight for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, expose our sins to us but not to the others. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Ameen. Ya Rabbi.